Take it away, Bernie. Excellent. So everyone's very welcome um, tonight at uh, our Her Plus data session. Um, just a little bit of um, housekeeping to go through before um, we get started um, with Brian's uh, goal mapping session. Um, Rachel's just mentioned we're recording the event and we'll share that later uh, via YouTube. If you've been on screens and things all day, feel free to move away from your screen if you need to. Feel free to turn your video off if you want to. As Rachel said, it's lovely to see everyone though if you, um, if you feel comfortable in sharing your, your screen and your camera. Um, please feel free to engage and ask questions in the chat. I'm sure Brian will give us some guidance as to how he wants to manage that, um, but feel free to, to message um, any of the organizers with any issues at any time if you, if you want to. And please don't share the uh, Zoom room link publicly. It just allows us to keep it private. Um, we do have a code of conduct. We've never needed to enforce this in any way, but if you have any reason to uh, feel that you need either Rachel, uh, Mona or myself, then these are the ways that you can um, uh, contact us and the full code of conduct is there on the meetup page. So at Her Plus Data Manchester, our mission is to bring together women with a connection to data to provide a safe space where we can support and celebrate each other, share experiences and knowledge, and establish meaningful connections and talk data. We are organizers, I'm Bernadette. Um, Mona can't be with us this evening and Rachel, if you'll just give us a, a quick wave now, but I'm sure most of you know us by now. Um, these are some of the um, pictures of the last few events we've been running for three years and obviously most of our events were live. And in March this year, we went virtual as a lot of um, events had to as well. So I think Rachel will take a group photo um, in just a moment. Um, our events are usually on the second Thursday of every month. Um, we're not having an event in December and in January, um, we will do a community call for feedback as to how we want to sort of shape our Her Plus Data Manchester event for 2021. We're always open to um, and actively seeking collaboration on any events. So if you have any ideas, if you want to suggest a speaker um, or a theme or topic, or you'd like to speak yourself, feel free to contact uh, myself or Rachel. These are the various different ways that you can connect with us. And a big thank you to Evolution Recruitment Solutions, who I work for, for supporting our group um, and our events. And thank you as well to the Software Sustainability Institute for covering the cost of the meetup page. Tonight's session um, is our 32nd meetup, and we're really, really lucky to be joined by um, Brian Main. I've um, had the pleasure of uh, being part of one of Brian's sessions uh, previously. Um, he uh, did a workshop for our leadership team at Evolution. Um, so I know that you'll find it both um, enjoyable um, as well as valuable. And I think this year has been one of those years that maybe people need uh, goal setting more than, more than ever um, in our lives. Um, Brian is an international speaker um, as well as an author. Um, and he is also well on the way to achieving his own goal of lifting the lives of 7 million people with his goal mapping um, program. So I think Rachel's just going to take a photo and then I'll hand over to Brian. Yeah, so if you would like to be in our group photo, now is the time to um, turn your camera on. I'll give a few seconds and I'll take a quick photo. We very much appreciate you continuing to come to our events and we hope that you find them um, useful and enjoyable. So I like to document it when I can. So thank you so much. And I will take the photo in three, two, one. Awesome, thank you so much, everyone. And now we'll hand over to Brian. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me to share goal mapping. I've, I've been teaching this system for 25 years. And there are a lot of people that it's reached now around the world. And it is a truly universal way of setting goals and helping you to be at your best. And I'm just going to talk about it generally tonight. And it will be your choice 
how you use it. My recommendation is that if you learn the simple steps of how to create your map, then it's like a life skill that you have for many years and you can use it in many ways. It's not only lifelong in terms of a skill, it is a life-wide in that there are many areas of life where we want to have an intention and a plan uh, and desires. And goal mapping is just a very simple way of doing that. Before I go into how you create the map, I want to show a PowerPoint presentation that gives some of the background information and I'll share a little about my own story so that it, everyone tonight understands uh, why I'm passionate about this program and have dedicated the last 25 years to helping people use it. If you would like to create your own map, and really that is what makes the system work, it's not listening to me talk about it that makes it work. It is you creating your map that makes it work. And I have here my folder with, with my own maps. Uh, and even after 25 years, I'm still creating my own maps. And they're here in my folder because I use them in my business and various areas of my life every day. And if you would like to do your own map, simply go to my website, goalmapping.com. And from there, you can either use the free online software, and that's my recommendation to use the software because it gives the flexibility to be able to update your map with new insights and new detail. And I'll explain why that's important as we go forward. Or if you are more creative and you like to draw, for instance, you can download the printable paper templates and instruction. Any questions that anyone has as we go through the evening, please do just either write your question or if it's suitable uh, and you can unmute your microphone, I'm very happy to to hear your questions and to be more fluid then in the answers. I'll see if I can share my screen, looks good, and bring up this PowerPoint presentation. Let's just position the video a little more out the way. So it's a very universal system. I never imagined it reaching so many people when I first started teaching it. And I never imagined it would spread so well uh, to so many people. Here's one of my goal maps, and this is a map I drew back in 2008, and I drew it on paper. In fact, I drew it on a, on a big piece of paper. I don't know if I have it here somewhere. Let me look. Yeah. So right here, you can see it's on a huge piece of card. Once a year, if it's a really important goal, I would draw it big. Most often it's on an A4. But this is a big goal. Uh, my mission, if you like, I believe, is to reach 7 million people. And I'm at about 5 million I've written books that are in many languages. There are 1,430 people around the world certified to teach the system. But I believe you're one of them uh, that was in the certification program with uh, Evolution. And uh, there are many applications uh, for the system. It's the online program and running online webinars like this that is really now helping to spread the message and the technique to a lot of people. It's a very simple thing, and yet it's a very powerful thing. So a lot of big corporate clients, Microsoft, Barclays, Siemens, Disney, Coca-Cola, et cetera, et cetera, that use goal mapping sometimes within leadership, sometimes customer service, certainly sales, 
uh, graduate programs, BT for many years, had goal mapping as part of their graduate program. More recently, organizations such as Halfords included goal mapping in their graduate program. My passion was to get goal mapping to students in schools. Uh, this is a group of Swedish school children. They're holding up their goal maps that they did for increasing their grades within their exams and getting clear about what they want to achieve in their future. And I believe it's one of the finest gifts that we can give to our young people is the ability of how to set goals in a powerful way so they can shape their life. It is, I believe, the number one life skill. It's the one life skill that if you get good at goal setting, you can use it for all other things in life that are important to you. And it's, again, as I mentioned earlier, lifelong. More than a million children from primary school, secondary school, university, intergraduate programs, all creating goal maps around their grades, their education, their future across many countries, 30 countries now. So here in Nigeria, with one of the top private schools in Lagos. And in addition to business and education, sports people using goal mapping. This is Kathleen Konya, and she is three times world champion kickboxer. And next to her picture, you can see her goal map. Athletes value visualization. They have for many years. It's standard training now for all professional athletes. They use visualization to enhance their physical performance. And a goal map is like an intense form of visualization because you're capturing the image in the form of a map. And Catalin wrote a lovely testimonial saying that goal mapping gave her the edge and helped her to win the world championships. Now, in addition to being world champion kickboxer, she has a passion for helping people find the work that they love to do. And she works for uh, an employment service in Denmark. She's originally from Hungary, but now lives in Copenhagen. And she likes to help young women find their power, find the work they love to do, and excel within their dream career. I'm presented in many countries around the world, normally traveling to those countries, but this year, of course, with the COVID situation, presenting more often online, here being filmed in Finland for TV, where I was speaking at a spiritual conference. Uh, there are lots of magazines in various languages, all publishing articles around goal mapping, and here, an article from CNN about using goal mapping to advance your career and gain your next promotion. We have world leading coaches such as Anthony Robbins here testifying how powerful the system is, not just for setting goals, but ongoing sustainable success. Before we go into creating the map, let's look at why. It's important to set goals on a regular basis. For many years, I've been uh, testifying that we live in a fast changing world. And of course, this year it has changed faster than ever before. And it's affected more people than ever before. And many people needing to change, not just the way that they work, but how they live their daily habit patterns. The reason why the world is changing faster and faster is because of technology. And of course, this year with COVID-19, it's enforced a lot of change on people. And I'm meeting many people that are very unbalanced by the amount of change. Some people needing to find new employment, and new ways of working, new income opportunities. Whenever we are in a lot of change, it's really important to remember that change always creates opportunity. The only way that we can have something new, something more, something different in our life 
is if there is change. The challenge is that so many people are in fear of change. And if we are in fear of change, uh, we become blind to the opportunity. And the fear blinds us to the opportunity. It's often hidden behind the difficulty. It's like the silvery lining in the cloud. But when we're in fear, we just see the cloud and not the silvery lining. Now, you'll notice here the uncertain is written in bold. Because if we are sure that the changes are going to be good for us and there's no fear, if we really believe, oh, there's change coming, but it's going to be a promotion, it's going to be more income, I'm going to be a lot happier, I'll be healthier, wealthier, bring the change. We like it, bring it. When we are uncertain about the changes that are taking place, and it's a very distressing thing, I think, for many people at the moment, that they are living with such uncertainty about their future. And when we're in that uncertainty about change, then the tendency is we go into fear. And when we're in fear, either we become blind to the opportunities, or we can see the opportunities, we know they're there, but we're too afraid to step forward and seize the opportunity. The more we can approach change with the right attitude of mind and condition of heart, the more we're able to both see and seize those opportunities and step forward and find a benefit in our life. Sometimes the changes in our life are more minor, and other times, as they are for many people this year, the changes are, are major. Some years ago, I had huge changes come into my life, and I wasn't expecting them. They were, they were sudden, and uh, I was very, very fortunate to meet someone who became my coach. And one of the early things he said to me was this statement here in the orange at the bottom. A change is like the wind that blows. We cannot direct it. We cannot control it. What we can do is adjust the set of ourselves. If you imagine that you are like a sailing boat upon the ocean and you're making your journey, the wind will change many times. It will change direction and it will change strength. But if you have learnt your skill as a sailor and you are captain of your own boat, regardless of which way the wind changes or how strongly it blows, you can adjust the set of the sail, the angle of the boat, and you can capture the force of good created by that wind and use it to power you on your journey. Life is this way. We are each of us on a journey through life. The conditions will change many times, sometimes suddenly and unexpectedly, as they have this year with COVID-19. Regardless of the changes, we can choose the set of our cell. And in life, the personal set of our cell is our outlook on life and our situation. It is our belief about ourself and our ability. And it is the attitude that we bring forward and meet the situation with, which influences our physical response and action. And regardless of our situation, we can choose our thoughts. And through that, we can influence our feelings and attitudes and empower our actions. And by choosing thought, feeling, and action, we are able to find the opportunity created by change. And I was saying just a few moments ago, before we started the presentation, when talking to Rachel and Bernadette, that this year, although I haven't enjoyed it particularly because of all the difficulties with COVID-19, I've actually found the opportunities hidden in the difficulty 
And I've reached even more people this year by working online than I would have reached last year when I was physically traveling to different countries and presenting to a physical audience. The more we learn the principles of success and life, and we develop our ability to choose our thoughts and influence our feelings, the more prepared we are to deal with storms. COVID-19 is a storm that has been sweeping the planet. And if we are in fear, the storm will drive us. And if we are not clear about where we want to go and what we want to do, the storm takes over and many people are finding themselves stranded on some distant shore where they didn't want to be because they never clearly set their goals about where they do want to be. It is so important that each of us are absolutely clear about our desires and intentions for our future. When we are setting personal goals in that way, the goal becomes like a beacon of light that helps us to keep our course. We need to make so many changes with the different conditions. If we just look back at the last three, four months, the rules about how we should live on a daily basis, wearing a mask, going in shops, how we need to be in the workplace, the rules are changing all of the time. And we are needing to change how we work to fit with the rules. And in all of these great many changes we are needing to make, it's so important that we have that focus, that beacon of light that is our goal, that shines a little hope that we can keep steering towards so that we're staying on track and we are staying mindful of the opportunities that are created. The greater the opportunities. And it is hard to see sometimes, but there are great and amazing opportunities that will be created. Did we lose Brian? <laughs> I think we must have done if I hear anything. Whoop. Has he gone? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure he'll come and go and come back. It's bound to happen, isn't it? Yeah. Has anybody made a goal map before? I have obviously, but um has anyone else? I know there's um, a little bit of sort of a building up to the story, but because I've um, heard uh, Brian and I've, I've, I've spent all day with him actually at like an all day workshop. Um, so it's necessary to build the to build the picture so that then you're in the uh, right frame of mind to actually do your goal map. So I appreciate that there is a little bit of a build up to it, but it will all make sense, I think, for you all. We have a lot of first time goal mapping chat going on in the chat. Um, someone has said that their dad used to encourage them to make them as kids and cuts out pictures of magazines. I love that. It's brilliant. Um, Welcome back, Brian. Oh, you're <laughs> muted. You're on mute, Brian. One of the joys <laughs> of working online and not having such a secure internet connection. Um, has it thrown everybody else out or are we all still here? I've seen 27 people showing. Yeah, all still here. I will go back to, I think you just got to give me permission because of uh, oh, my- yep, you're right. Coming back in. 
Okay, I've made you co-host now, so hopefully you should so see much. that. So, the very best way that I've discovered of creating a goal map, uh, of, of setting goals, is a goal map. And what makes a goal map unique is this balanced combination of words and pictures. Uh, we need both. Uh, the words in the form of an affirmation, so a, a statement that's written in personal, positive, and present tense, and the imagery, of course, forming a visualization. And by using this combination of words and pictures, affirmation, visualization, we engage both our logical mind, which thinks more in words, and our creative mind, which thinks more in pictures. In creating the map, seven fundamental steps of creation. Step one, uh, we want to have a dream and get clear about what we want to achieve and then to structure it. So in the very center, we have a main goal. And then on either side, we have secondary goals. And these can be from all different areas of our life, or they can all be from the same area, such as our career or a project or a health map, fitness map, that type of thing. At the top, we have the motivating reasons why. What are your strongest reasons, emotional reasons, for why you want to achieve your goals? And then when? So a goal without a date is not really a goal. It's a wish that maybe we'll get round to someday. By giving a date, and we, and we may not achieve the goal by the date, but by having the date, we have a aiming point and we give a start date and that forms a timeline. So start date at the bottom of the map and then just underneath the main goal, a target achievement date. And then in step six, how? What are the three major actions or steps we need to take that will move us along a path towards the achievement of our main goal? And then finally, who? Who will help? Sometimes the who will be us, a way of being, like a, an attitude of being focused. Or sometimes it will be significant others, teachers, advisors, family, friends. Sometimes it's going to be a team. We want the who opposite the how moving us towards the what. So the goal is the what. The actions we need to take are obviously the how. And then we need to be clear who's going to help us take those actions. Seven simple steps. What do you want? Right brain imagination. What's the priority? Left brain logic. What does it look like when you map it out? Create the words and pictures. Why do you want it? When, how, who? A lot of people that come to me have dream boards or vision boards. They become very popular in recent years, and they work very well. The limitation sometimes is that people have lots of nice pictures, but no words. And actually, we need both. Words for the left logical brain, so we can be clear and precise. Imagery for the right creative brain, so that we engage it, and through that, we also command our subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind is like our own personal autopilot. It's very powerful. It can do the most amazing things, but it cannot choose for us. With our conscious mind, we are like the captain of the boat and we set the goal. And our subconscious mind is like the crew. It is doing most of the work, but it doesn't get to vote. It follows the commands of the captain. It follows our strongest conscious thoughts. And what makes a conscious thought strong 
is by using this combination of words and pictures. The two together activate our whole brain and send a very powerful command to our subconscious. Here is one of my goal maps. This, in fact, is my current goal map. And this is a goal map focused on happiness. I run a free monthly master class where each month I get a volunteer to create a goal map in real time on screen share with me as a demonstration to others. And each month we create a different map. And I think it's important to have goal maps, not just about your life generally, but also focused on specific areas. And last month, I guided people to create a goal map for happiness. So here is my happiness goal map. It's also here in my folder. I look at it once a day. And as I look at the pictures, I say the words to help me form the brain cell connections that in turn are commanding my subconscious. My journey into this technique has been a little unusual. I was born into a traveling fun fair family. And for generations, my ancestors have operated carnival equipment. Happens again. <laughs> Somebody asked a, asked a question, should the um, creative side be hand-drawn or could it be images copied? And based on the, the example he just shared, I think um, you could do what, what somebody else does is make like a vision board so you can probably cut and paste stuff as well. I know I can't hand-draw for anything, so I'll give it a go, but. Either or, oh um, and, and Brian will probably answer the question himself, but when we did this session, um, some of us drew and, you know, and people, it, it resonated with people that were creative and it, it helped them to actually form the goal better if they drew it. Um, and then I would be someone that would copy and paste those images and either or. But what is really important is that you've got imagery combined with words. I think that is a really interesting idea in order to engage both sides of the of the brain. Hi, Brian. <laughs> I have to make you co-host. Oh, it says you are still co-host. I've never had it drop out like this before in a webinar uh, or presentation. So my apologies. It says when I check that it's still connected. And for some reason, though, it's uh, obviously losing the connection. So here's a an image then of my great grandmother on her uh, stool. She was a, a, a conjurer. She was one of the first lady magicians in England. When it wasn't allowed, actually, it was illegal to be a magician and a lady uh, back in her day. So she often dressed as a guy. You can see her here in the big hat. And behind her is uh, my great aunt and other members of the family. On both sides of my family, this is my uh, great grandfather on my father's side, open with his amusements in London at the Olympia. And here my grandfather, grandmother, aunt and uncle and father sat on the steps of their wagon. And then moving it more up to date, here's a picture of my father's fun fair. And right down the bottom of the screen is my father walking through the flood water. This picture was taken at Weymouth and it was taken the year I was born, 1961. And my father decided at this point that the fairground life was changing and becoming harder. And one of the main reasons was home entertainment. People started to have TV sets and they were less interested in going out to the traveling fair because they had more modern conveniences at home. And a lot of the funfair people 
took the opportunity and saw the change coming and took their amusements to the seaside, which is what my father did. And he took all of his amusements to where I still live, which is Ventnor on the Isle of Wight. And I'm sat at the moment not far from where this picture was taken. I live on the seafront. And here in the picture, you can see the pier that my father owned and opened all of his amusements on. And gradually, the business here on the island grew. And so we traveled less and less for the fun fair. But up until I was 18, I would have three different homes each year. I had one home traveling around on the fun fairs for four months. Normally, it would be at the start and end of year. And then through the summer months, I would be on the Isle of Wight where we opened up for the tourist industry. And then we had a third home, which was our winter base by Heathrow Airport. So three different homes each year for about three or four months each home. Three different sets of friends, always two, sometimes more different schools. No schools where we traveled. So I only went to school for about five months each year, divided between different schools. And my education was quite limited. I never sat any exams. And I left school at 13 without qualifications and unable to read or write properly. That was partly because of my lifestyle of traveling around, uh, but mostly because I have dyslexia. My brother and my sister had the same experience as me, but they learned to read and write well. But for me, it was a real challenge. And I think if I'd have been born into a more normal life and attended the same school all year round, I would still struggled academically uh, because of the dyslexia. When I left school at 13, I started working for my father full time and he wanted me to lead the business and I led the family business in a new direction. And I become the youngest person at that time to be granted a license to open a disco. I was 18 when they gave me the license, 19 by the time I opened the disco, the picture here of it, 1981. It was the beginning of the new romantic uh, scene at that time. I opened quite an unusual club. I filled it full of old fun fair and circus junk, uh, but it became very popular. In fact, we're in a lot of the music magazines. We had a lot of pop stars and celebrities that would come to the club. And I was very successful with it. I was uh, very wealthy, very young. I run the nightclub for. 13 years. Uh, I had a lot of uh, good times. But then at the end of the 13 years, in the late uh, 1980s, early 90s, a big change came. And like many changes, we don't always see it coming. And the change that came for me was affordable airfare and package holidays. And in the late 1980s, early 90s, uh, the majority of English people started taking their main summer holiday abroad in the Mediterranean, not in England. And my customers, 18 to 30, were some of the early people to start going abroad rather than uh, an English holiday. They were going to places like Ibiza and Spain and Greece, uh, Italy. They weren't coming to the Isle of Wight anymore. And the Isle of Wight's main income at that time was tourism. And it just started to die. By the early 90s, family groups were also going abroad. By the mid 1990s, even old age pensioners were taking their main summer holiday in Spain on a coach trip with their friends. And it became a very sad time on the island. Lots of the businesses closed down and my family's business was one of those. And so at age 29, I found myself in a really challenging situation. My life had changed completely. And I had gone from being 
uh, worth a lot of money to owing a lot of money. I was a millionaire by the age of 25 and by 29, I was actually in a million pounds of debt. My home was repossessed. The family business had closed down. The nightclub closed down. My income stopped. I found myself uh, unemployed on government income support for the first time in my life. I moved back into my parents' home on charity after my own home was repossessed. And it really uh, wiped out the entire family. My brother's home was repossessed and my mother and father's home was also due to be repossessed. Uh, I really didn't know what I would do. I had no formal work experience. I'd never had an, a normal career. I'd worked for myself or my father. I had uh, no qualifications because of leaving school early. And at age 29, I still couldn't read or write properly. My marriage ended under the pressure and my wife went her own way. I was very depressed, but wouldn't get help. I sat in my old bedroom in my parents' house in fear, and all I could see was the problem. I couldn't see any opportunities. And I, I really was in, in a, a sort of a dire situation. And then one day, some friends come calling, and they offered me a job in direct sales. I didn't know if I could do it. It wasn't something that really appealed to me. Uh, but they were very direct with me and they told me, you need to do something. You just sat in your bedroom in fear. You've got a million pounds of debt, no qualification. You can't read or write properly, but we have an opportunity for you. Commission only. And I didn't really understand that. Uh, I, I now understand commission only means if you don't sell something, uh, you don't earn anything. Um, and I, I didn't fully understand that at first. And in my early uh, days in sales, I didn't sell anything. And <clears throat> I can look back and see why now. I had a, a negative attitude. I was a little bitter that my life had gone wrong. I was blaming a lot of people rather than taking responsibility. And the simple principle is that people like to buy things from happy and positive people and not negative moaning people. And I was doing a lot of moaning at the time. And so people weren't buying much from me. I wasn't earning any commissions and I was getting more and more sad. The turning point for me was that the sales team that I joined were given the opportunity of attending a personal development workshop. And my uh, sales manager invited me onto the workshop. I really didn't want to go, but he made it very simple. He said, you can either attend the workshop, Brian, or leave the team because everybody else is going. And so I went to the workshop, but I went with a very closed mind. I didn't know what personal development was, but I thought it was probably some sort of new age psychology thing. And I wasn't really very interested. But it became absolutely life changing for me. And it really started with understanding the simple science of positive thinking. There was a great trainer at the workshop who became my coach. And one of the early things that he said that made me open my mind a little and pay attention was this quote by Henry Ford. Now, this is. 27 years ago that I was on the workshop, the quote from Henry Ford is 100 years now old, and yet it is maybe more relevant today in this time of great change we are all going through than it has ever been. If you think you can, you can. Or if you think you can't, you can't. And either way, you're right. Now, I'd heard this statement before, and most people have heard it before, but I'd always just had a casual understanding where I thought, this is just someone's opinion. Like someone saying to you, be happy or be positive. It's good advice, but when you're in the middle of a difficult time, 
it just seems a little bit blasé, be happy. I didn't understand there was a science behind the saying. And it was understanding the science behind this saying from Henry Ford that becomes so life changing for me. And what I started to understand, and it's a journey of understanding that I'm continuing with to this day, is that inside of our brain, all of us have a great many brain cells. The estimate is you have 100 billion brain cells. And each one of your 100 billion brain cells or neurons, represented here by the black dot on the screen, grows these branches, which are called dendrite, and they're in the mauve color. And you grow a little wiggly tail here in blue, which is called an axon. When you have a thought, the thought starts as an electrical impulse, like a spark in the middle of the brain cell. It travels out along the arms and branches, and it wants to connect with another arm and brain cell so that you build a pattern of thought. But there is a small gap that separates all of the brain cell arms. It's called the synaptic gap. Now, here's the key point. Let's hope the connection stays good for this key point. If your thought is positive, if you choose a positive thought, and I'm emphasizing my words strongly here because each word is meaningful in the statement. If you choose a positive thought, sometimes something happens in our day and we have a instantaneous negative response. Someone is rude to us, something goes wrong, things don't turn out the way we would like, and we just have a negative response towards it, and it's momentary. After a few moments, it's a choice. And you can choose to stay focused on what you believe is wrong, or you can work with your mind and you can choose to look for that silvery lining, the opportunity and the difficulty. You can choose to look for what is right. And if you choose, to hold a positive thought about yourself, I like myself, or about your life, it's gonna be okay, or about an area or aspect of your life, like your ability to find the opportunities created by the change in your life, if you hold that positive thought, the positive impulse starts in the middle of the brain cell, it travels out along the dendrite arms and branches, and it stimulates a neuroreceptor at the end of the axon to release a chemical into your brain called serotonin. Serotonin is the chemical that gives you the feeling of happiness and well being. It's the feel good chemical. It's the same chemical that is triggered when you take an antidepressant, such as Prozac. If you train your brain, so if you practice the simple science and techniques of positive thinking using affirmation, I like myself, and visualization, that naturally releases serotonin. You can read endless medical reports on the internet about how we have this natural ability to release serotonin. Think about something happy and you start to feel good because the thought triggers the release of serotonin. The serotonin gives you the feeling. You can check it out in your own experience. Focus your mind right now onto some happy memory, maybe from years ago when you were young, maybe recently, maybe a happy thought of something you believe is coming. And as you focus on that happy thought, you release the serotonin and you will start to feel happy 
right now in this moment. Every emotion, every emotion we experience is triggered by chemicals from our brain and body. The emotion just doesn't come. Our thought triggers the chemical release. The chemical release creates the feeling. A lot of people don't get this fundamental point. If you listen to people's language, you can hear it in their words. They will say things like, oh, this makes me angry, or that makes me happy, or you make me sad. And the literal truth is no thing and no one can make us happy or angry or sad or any other way. It is our thoughts about life and our thoughts about people and our thoughts about ourselves that trigger the chemical that give us the feeling. And the combination of thought and feeling influence our body posture, our physiology and our behavior. Serotonin not only gives us a feeling and it's a good feeling, a positive, it's the happy chemical, Serotonin is also a neuroconductor. It bridges the synaptic gap. It joins the brain cells together. It allows the thought impulse to continue on its journey. And we form this positive pattern of thought. It's this joining together of brain cells in this way that gives us that aha moment, that light bulb experience where we suddenly come up with an answer or a solution to some of the challenges we're facing. Now, at first, we have that new idea, the brain cells join, but then they break back apart again. And this is why it's so important to learn how to set goals in a powerful way. Because when we have those new good ideas, we want to capture them in the form of a goal. Every time that we think about our goal, every time we remind ourselves of our goal, every time we visualize ourselves achieving our goal and tell ourselves we would do it, we strengthen the brain cell connection. And as we make the connection strong by reminding ourselves every day about what we want to achieve, so we form beliefs. Any belief we have about ourselves, our ability, and our life is simply the established connection between two or more brain cells. Brain cells that fire together, wire together. They become sticky, if you like, and they connect. And we can break old brain cell patterns and make new brain cell patterns and beliefs at any age, at any time simply by reminding ourselves over a period of 10 or more days about what it is we want to achieve so that we establish the brain cell connection and form a belief. The more connections we make, the more we're able to work with our whole brain. And we're in an age where we really need to play a whole brain game in order to achieve the most in life. We need to work with our right brain, which connects to our creative mind. And our creative mind has the gift of visualization. So we can create a picture of what we would like our life to be like in the future with lots of creativity and solutions to challenges and birth new ideas. And in balance, we want to work with our left brain, the logical mind, so we can form a strategy of how we will put our ideas into practice and move towards our vision, having an effective plan and being effective within our daily actions and routines. And the more we're able to find this balance between right brain and left brain, words and pictures, creative mind, logical mind, the more effective we are in turning our thoughts and chosen desires into our conscious daily reality. Therefore, if you think you can 
you probably will. Because in thinking you can, you release the serotonin, you form the brain cell connections, you're able to activate the whole of your brain, you find a way forward, and through the release of the serotonin, you find the feel good that gives you the motivation to face your fears and challenges and take another step on your journey. And just like Henry Ford said 100 years ago, if you think you can't, you probably won't. Because when you think negatively about yourself, about your life, about your situation, the negative thought, again, starts as an impulse in the middle of the brain cell. It travels out along the arms and branches, but it triggers the release of a different chemical, cortisol. Cortisol is the chemical that gives us the feeling of sadness and depression. It is a chemical messenger that is released from our brain and our body as part of our fight or flight survival system. If we're in a situation where we believe there is danger, and it doesn't have to be real danger, but if we are worrying about things in our life, our brain and our body start to release cortisol. The cortisol gives us the feeling of fear so that we pay more attention, give more care. And it also prepares our body to either fight or run away really fast. The cortisol tells our digestion to switch off. <clears throat> it closes off our, <clears throat> excuse me, our immune system, our lymph system, which cleans our body. And it shuts down whole areas of our brain so that as we go into fear, our brain closes down and focuses on the object of our fear, which looks bigger and bigger. <clears throat> and all the energy that's saved by shutting down our lymph system, immune system, digestion system, that energy is diverted to our muscles with adrenaline and endorphin so we can fight or flight, survive the danger. It's a system that has helped to protect humankind for several million years through our journey of evolution. And in ancient times, it worked amazingly well when we were facing a wild animal that we needed to either fight or run away from. In modern times, when the types of fear and danger we face are different, the system really doesn't work so well. In modern life, it's not often we need to find the energy to run away from a hungry bear, a pack of wild wolves or a saber toothed tiger. They are not the dangers we face in modern life. In modern life, we are facing dangers like I've lost my employment and I don't have enough income to pay my bills and provide for my loved ones and family. And when we are in that type of fear, uh, fighting or flighting doesn't help us in the situation. In fact, your body is only designed to be in the fear response for a short time. For the amount of time you, you can run really fast and climb a tree to escape that wild animal that wants to eat you for lunch. It is by running away and climbing a tree that you actually, through the exercise, burn off the cortisol in your system and release serotonin, which balances your brain and body chemistry. This is why athletes talk about the natural high they get when they work out. This is why doctors more and more are recommending physical exercise as part of the treatment for people that are in fear or depression or anxiety. Because by having the exercise, we burn off the cortisol and we put ourselves back into balance. The great challenge, and I believe it's particularly strong this year because of the COVID situation and the lockdown is that people are in fear 
but they're not moving their body enough to burn off the cortisol. Even if they exercise on a regular basis, there is such a high level of fear and anxiety in people at this time that really the cortisol is building up. Now, if you're not burning off the cortisol, it sends your body into stress. And you can be in stress a short time, but when you're in stress for a long time, and there are many people now that have been in stress for months since this started back in February and March with the beginning of the lockdown then and the COVID situation, the stress and anxiety has built up and up and up. And it means that people are living with their digestion not fully working, so they're not getting the proper nutrient from food they eat. Their lymph system isn't working, so their body's getting ready to run, but they're not running away from the danger. And that means that their lymph system isn't clean in their body, so toxicity is building up. Uh, when people are in stress for a long time, they start to get problems with their skin, spots and rashes and eczema, because their lymph system isn't clean in their body. The immune system is also suppressed when we're in stress. And that's why people that are in prolonged stress start to pick up colds and flus and then more serious illness. And there are more and more medical experts being interviewed now on the news on a regular basis, talking about the secondary challenges of people getting depressed and stressed during this prolonged period of great life change that everybody's experienced this year with COVID-19. To make matters worse, cortisol is a neuroinhibitor. So the more negative we become, the more cortisol we release, and cortisol blocks the spread of thought. So as you become more negative, your brain closes down. The survival instinct that has served humankind for so many years is actually counterproductive in modern life. Because the answer to life's modern problems, like changes in our employment, changes in the way that we live, changes that we need to make in order to keep ourselves healthy and in a good way during this challenging time, to find those answers, we actually need to think positively so that we activate our whole brain because the answers are often on the periphery. We need a creative solution. And when our brain closes down, we just see the problem looking bigger and bigger and bigger. So learning how to stay positive is really the way that we help ourselves most fully. And the very best way of staying positive is to set goals. By setting the goal and reminding ourselves of the goal once a day, we form that brain cell connection. And as we remind ourselves on a regular basis, we grow the connection strong. And by doing that, it helps us to engage in both our left logical brain. So we're good at making a plan and following a strategy, as well as engaging our right creative brain so that we can get clear about the vision and the desire that we have for the future. And it's by having this whole brain approach using words and pictures that we help ourselves the most. The very first meaningful goal that I set for myself when I was taught this 27, 28 years ago now was I set the goal to learn to read. It took me one year to teach myself how to read well. It was using positive thinking and imagining myself being able to read and telling myself I could do it that was the key for me. And when I learned to read, uh, I become fascinated in the science of positive thinking and personal development and goal setting. And I started to use it in all the areas of my life. I used it in my sales and I took my performance from the lowest person in the team to the highest. Lots of other people wanted to know how I achieved that. I started to make presentations. 
It was then recommended that I made a switch in my career from sales to training. And I got a position with the, set, with the training department and then was headhunted by various training companies. And then after a couple of years, I went freelance and started my own organization and started to teach uh, the goal mapping system. Goal mapping came in a single flash of insight. And it's difficult for me to put into words how truly amazing it felt to learn to read at age 30. I believe that most people at age 30 have been reading for many years and it's just become normal for them. Uh, I'm not saying they aren't grateful, but I think many people just take it for granted because if you can read and you've been doing it for a long time, uh, you probably don't realize what a special thing it is. If you can't read and then suddenly you learn how to at age 30, it feels like a little bit of magic. And it just felt amazing uh, to learn to read at age 30. I wanted to read everything just because I could. Big words out loud. And my mentor, my coach, the man that started teaching me uh, this material, encouraged me to focus my reading into books about personal development and self-improvement. And I learned to speed read. I was reading a, a book a week uh, within a year of learning to read. All of the personal, <coughs> all of the personal development books I read were saying the same basic thing. Long-term success is not an accident. You can have a random piece of good fortune. Winning the lottery is random good fortune. Long-term success is not random. It is purposeful. And invariably, it will ultimately come back to Thinking positive thoughts. By thinking positive thoughts, we release the serotonin that gives us positive feelings and winning attitudes that empower our behavior and actions. And through the law of cause and effect, uh, we produce positive results in our life. Creating a goal map using words and pictures captures those positive thoughts. And when I started working as a trainer, the big burning question in my mind from around 1993 onwards was what is the very best, most powerful way of setting goals? I asked the question of all the other trainers I worked with, I wrote to world leading trainers like Anthony Robbins and asked them. I thought about it endlessly and then driving my car late one night through the center of London. I had a goal map here like this one on the screen flash into my mind. And although it took me some time to understand the detail in my flash of inspiration, I understood instantly, intuitively, that here was an answer to my question. And that if we are going to set goals in the most powerful way, we need this combination of words and pictures so that we're engaging both the left logical mind as well as the right creative mind. Tradition. Hey, Brian. Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, I know that we've been running um, a little bit behind because of uh, connection yeah, issues, yeah. but I just wanted to give a heads up that we only have about 17 minutes left. And I just Good. Wanted... So traditionally, uh, we learn in education a combination of technical knowledge and skill training. However, it is what I call the DAC factor. DAC stands for Drive, Attitude, 
and confidence. And developing our level of drive, attitude and confidence or mindset is what determines what we do with our technical knowledge or skill set. And if we use this analogy that we are each of us riding a bicycle, which represents our ability to function well in life. You can say that the back wheel of the bicycle is your technical knowledge and skills. The front wheel of the bicycle, because you can steer, represents the softer skills, listening skills, communication skills, influencing skills. However, it is each of us that every day pedal the bicycle. And what determines whether we are pushing hard at the thing we've chosen to do or we are looking for an easy ride comes down to who we are being as a person. And in particular, those three core qualities of mindset. The greater we build our mindset, the more power we have in working with our skill set and applying our knowledge and the better we're getting along with the people around us, whether that is family, friends, customers, or colleagues. Now, everyone will have either an experience of riding a bicycle at some point in their life, or they will certainly seen other people do it, and they will know from their own personal experience that it's incredibly difficult to stay balanced on the bicycle if we are not moving. We need the momentum to give us equilibrium or balance. And in life, this is why, again, it's so important to set goals. Having a goal gives us that sense of direction and momentum that helps us to move forward pull through the difficult, challenging times, and through that we keep our balance in life. If you look around at the people that are really not clear about where they are going in their life or why, because sometimes they will be following a path but just feel like they're on the treadmill, then they become a little bit unbalanced. And it takes sometimes just the slightest pebble of difficulty to unbalance someone and send them crashing down to the ground. Having a strong sense of direction, purpose and goal doesn't mean that we won't face challenging times. It simply means that having the goal and purpose gives us the power to pull through those bumpy patches in life's journey and invariably we come out the other side the stronger. So let us look then at some of the simple but fundamentally important laws and principles for when we are setting goals. Number one is believe in yourself and your goal. How do we build belief in ourselves? It is in the same way that athletes do it, which is through visualization. Every time you visualize yourself achieving your goal and tell yourself you would do it, you form those brain cell connections that form the belief. Number two, understand that goals are purely personal. You can have team goals, you can have family goals, you can have partnership goals. It needs each person to set the goal. So if I was in Bernadette's team and she stepped forward one day and she said, Brian, here's the goal, it's really Bernadette's goal. If I step forward and say, yes, I'm with you, Bernadette, and I set the goal also, now it's our goal it becomes shared goal 
And if there's more people, a team goal. But it needs each person to be setting the goal to influence their own subconscious mind and move themselves towards the goal. If you wish to live a truly balanced life, then set a balance of goals. Some people have the idea that goals are just about career or sometimes uh, uh, finances, or maybe people will set health or sports goals. Every aspect of our life, including, of course, and importantly, contribution, setting goals to help charity, all of the aspects of our life really desire and require to be goal orientated. And the more that we are balanced in our goal setting, that we have some goals for all the important areas, the more balance we help ourselves achieve. The tendency with some people when they're setting goals is to live in the future. But the power is always now and in the moment. And so whenever we're setting goals, it's important to stay in the now because in setting the goal, we are looking to command our subconscious and our subconscious mind doesn't understand time. Our conscious mind understands there is a past, a present and a future. But our subconscious lives in the moment of now. And so whenever we're setting goals, we must write the goal as if it is happening now. We write it in present tense. It's important to say what you want and not what you don't want. This may sound very obvious, but again, the subconscious mind doesn't understand abstract thought. And a lot of people write their goals in the negative and create things that they don't want. A classic example is people will write, I don't want to smoke anymore. That sounds like a positive goal or it could be any habit pattern they're looking to change. Uh, but actually, it's written in the negative because the subconscious doesn't understand don't. If you observe very young children, their conscious mind isn't developed. So toddlers, for instance, their subconscious is much more to the surface. If you tell a young child, don't touch, uh, you'll notice what they do is they touch. Because the subconscious mind can't work it out, don't touch. Uh, they're already touching before they can understand that the statement is saying not to do it. So it's saying touch not. And so you have to be very positive and literal in the command. I don't want more debt becomes more debt to your subconscious. So you must always write the goal in the positive. I am financially free. I have a positive bank balance. Or if your goal was around stopping smoking, uh, I am free would be the goal. Or whatever words represented you overcoming the habit you wanted to change. A lot of people write down things like, I don't want to be sad anymore. All the subconscious takes from that is be sad more. I am happy. So you always write the goal like you have it because the subconscious doesn't understand time and you say what it is you want, not the thing that you don't want. Final principle, allow for time. Now, there is a lag between setting the goal, working with your mind to set the goal and the magic of your subconscious bringing the goal. And so you have a gap of time. The bigger the goal and the greater your belief uh, alters the time frame. Sometimes we've got a big goal, like for me, writing the book was a big goal. I needed to allow a long period of time for the writing of the book and the publication. In, in total, from starting the book to publication, it was about four and a half years. Uh, but it was worth 
the wait in the time for the goal. And of course, it wasn't a consistent effort for four and a half years. It just took that amount of time to work through the process of creating the goal and it manifested. So here is my main website of goalmapping.com. You can sign up for absolutely free. I'll just log in here. And you are given access to both the online software as well as the downloadable printable paper templates and instruction. So that you have the choice of whether you want to create your goal map hand drawn on paper or using the online system. I actually like to use a combination of the two. Uh, here are some of my latest goal maps. They show up here I'm on my home page. If I go on to my goal maps, you can see that I have loads and loads and loads of maps. Some of these are old and they've been achieved, but I've left them here because I like to look back on them. Others I've just started, like this one that I'm doing uh, to help teachers learn goal mapping and help young people in youth clubs and schools. But here is one that I created just last month, which is my happiness goal map. If I click on that, you can see I've got the goal map here in words and pictures. And I'm using a combination of my own drawings that I've uploaded into my personal image library, photos that I've taken. This is me on the beach just outside of my apartment here on the seafront this summer. My children skiing with me last year, me speaking at conferences. So I've got main goal in the center. This is focused on me being happy, side goals, and the difference that being happy makes in my productivity within work, uh, the effect it has on my children, it boosts my income. Of course, it's good for my health and well-being. I'm working on a one month time frame because looking at your map once a day and saying the words forms those brain cell connections. And a good period of time for that is one month. And then here I've got the steps and who's going to help. And you can quite simply sign up for the program for free, go into Create Map, and it takes you through the seven steps of creating your goal map. There's video tutorial on each of the steps so that out of the other end pops your goal map. If I go back into my health and well-being one, I click on the edit. You can listen to the visualization. It's about seven minutes long of me helping you to relax and seeing your best day in the future. You then write your goals down. You just write them in the field, click add dream. And then in step two, you identify what you believe is the most important goal. The one that once achieved most helps you with the others. In step three, you add the imagery. If I click on the image icon, it opens up the image library. You can upload your own images. You have your own personal library, or you can access the pre-stocked folders, or you can search the internet if you're looking for a specific image. You follow the same process for all of the steps. So step four, you're putting in your motivating reasons. And then step five, you're choosing a date within the calendar. Step six, you're identifying the actions you want to take. You can write a to-do list if you want to, to connect to each of the actions. And then step seven, who's going to help you? Is it just you or are those key other people? And then final step, number eight, brings you through to see in your map. And of course, having the map digital, you can choose. Do you want to see it side by side, combining the words and the pictures, just pictures, just words? You can share it with somebody else, a coach, a team member. And of course, you can download it 
and print it out. The key thing is one, creating the map, and then two, looking at the map once a day and saying the pictures so that you strengthen those brain cell connections. Follow that process for 10 days minimum, 30 days better, and you start to form beliefs and constant commands to your subconscious. It is very, very simple, but also powerful. It is simple enough that a million children have created maps. It is powerful enough that Microsoft sent it to 70,000 of their managers around the world and paid for their own people to be certified in training it, as have BT, Barclays, a whole host of organizations. The material freely available, either to use the software or those principal templates, and in addition to creating your map, you can also watch the video here in the life path from the goal mapping workshop that if you want to deepen your understanding about some of the points we've covered tonight, it is all here within this video. And you can simply go through the video. And even if you wish to download the workbook pages so you have a complete understanding. There are a, a number of tools and resources on the website, such as doing a life balance check or exploring your life purpose, accessing the to-do list. There's a resource center with the workbook pages and an online journal. If you wish to, you can also find a goal mapping coach in your area, we have many around the world who will work with you and help you to shape your map. I'm going to take the screen share off and just take a few moments to answer any questions that may have been written either in the uh, chat field. I don't see any there at the moment. I don't know if anyone has sent uh, questions in to you, Rachel or Bernadette, that you would like me to answer before we finish. Uh, first, let's just go ahead and thank you, Brian, for your presentation. Virtual You're round very of welcome. applause. My <laughs> apologies for the dropout of connection we experienced there. It's not a problem. Um, we just had a few questions at the very start. Um, did anybody want to unmute and ask any questions before they go? Um, one of the questions earlier was, um, let me find it. Um, should the creative side be drawn by hand or could it be images copied? And um, I think that was kind of answered by what you just demonstrated on your website. You can insert kind of however people feel most comfortable. Yeah, I'll just add one quick point, uh, which is it is not the medium. It is the meaning of the image that is the key thing. So for someone who likes to draw, that will create a lot of brain cell activity. For someone who doesn't like to draw, it creates much less brain cell activity. And regardless of whether you like to draw or don't like to draw, having a recognizable photo, like I have a photo of my children, that image is deeply ingrained in the consciousness. So if you use a family photo of loved ones, that will actually trigger more brain cell stimulation than any drawing you can do because the image is so deeply ingrained into your brain cell pattern and consciousness. Um, it really resonated with me what you were saying about um, basically the months of stress and anxiety and fight or flight mode in the past few months. I definitely feel like my fight or flight mode has just been active for ages. Um, so I'm really looking forward to using this as a way to kind of calm that down. I don't know if anybody else wants to um, unmute or show their video if they um, if they had a chance to, to do a goal map while Brian was going through it. I made one with a really simple 
I say simple, it's been my goal since the start of lockdown to start doing yoga. Um, so I've got a lot of positive uh, statements and people who I can hold me accountable. And my goal is to start doing yoga by the 1st of December. <laughs> Of course, there is uh, one other aspect within that fight or flight and lockdown, uh, because uh, you just mentioned it, Rachel, which is freeze. And it can be very strong in ladies because it's a protective instinct, particularly if you've got children and you imagine you were out in the jungle and a wild animal is coming. Sometimes you'll fight. Sometimes you'll flight. Other times you will freeze. So you stay very still and you hide and you see this happening naturally in lots of species. And I think there are probably a lot of people that don't know what to do in this situation and they're, they're feeling fearful because they're seeing life changing and because they don't know what to do, they're freezing and, and they're freezing with, with that fear. And again, a goal map, really it works in two ways. It helps us to become very consciously clear about what we want to achieve as well as sending that powerful command to our subconscious to help us move towards it. I, I think we have one, qu yeah, we have one question in the chat. Is there anywhere good to get inspiration for goals if you're feeling a bit stuck? Well, I'd say watch some of the video that is within the online program. Uh, in total, there's quite some hours of video there. Um, maybe four and a half hours of video. We've been covering just uh, a little more than an hour's worth, hour and 20 tonight, hour and 25 maybe. And so there's a deeper understanding there. And of course, I, I do uh, give also a free monthly masterclass. And so in addition to what we've done tonight, I do a goal map in real time where it's less presentation and more working through doing the map. And uh, the next one of those is next week. And again, people can register for that on my website. Uh, there's uh, no payment or anything like that. It's absolutely free. Um, and uh, people can just join it and follow through and create their own map uh, by watching me coach somebody else to create theirs. Got it. Thank you. And the, the one next week is, will be on a goal map to increase self-esteem. It's an important thing during this time. A lot of people not feeling so good about themselves. And so having those types of maps, not just maps about our career and uh, the physical things, but sometimes goals that are more mental and emotional uh, really help us during a period such as this. Absolutely. Do we have any final questions? If not, let's thank Brian again. Virtual. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Brian. <laughs> thank you. Lovely to be with you. Thank you ever so much. Apologies for the internet.